So there are many ways to make an electronic project. The first and most common way is to use the breadboard because it's the prototype version of your project that you have in your mind. So this breadboard is used to put all your components. It's nothing permanent, you can move things around, but it can become very messy like this because you have all your wires, all your connections here. You're just testing at this stage. But when you have your idea clear and everything is working fine, then you have to put it in a more precise and also like permanent way. So in that case, we use something like this, where you can put all your components, solder them and they're permanent. So they're not gonna move around. You can end up with something like this. It doesn't look quite good, that's it. So there is another option and is to make a professional PCB so you can solder all your components and all the layout is very good looking. So that's what I did and I got this circuit which is a LED blinking light or any kind of light that you want to blink using a 555 timer which is a very common IC so here it is here is before putting all the components and here is after I'm going to show you how I did this and how you can get these PCBs for five dollars so you can get 10 of them is 10 of them for five dollars to achieve this i use an online service called pcb way which is a company dedicated specially to making pcbs and fabricating them so it's a professional finish and they work perfectly so in a previous video i did a circuit capable of blinking leds on the tips of the wings of my rc airplanes and this is a project i've been working on for almost four months already and this is the first version which is using through hole components it's larger components and it's it's working quite good and this is the new version which is using SMD components, which are very difficult to solder because they're very small. So I'm going to show you the whole process right now. Let's get started. Everything begins with the design. Since this is the second version of the board, it is easier for me taking as a reference the first one. To make the design, I used Fritzing, which is a very easy to use software and it's free, but I will prefer to use other softwares in the future. When the design is finished, we export our Java file and we leave it there for a the moment. Now we go to the website PCB Way and we start making the order. There you have to input the size manually and also the quantity needed. If you want it for $5, you cannot go above 10 pieces. Next, we have to go through all the details needed for this project. In my case, I will select a thinner board because this board is really small. What I like about PCB Way is that you can select different colors apart from green and you still have the same price, but not all the colors are included with that price, so be aware of that. You have to choose the rest of the options according to your project needs, but most of the time you don't have to change anything else because everything is pretty much standard. Then we go to calculate the shipping price. The cheapest one is China Post. After that, we have to create an account. I think you can create the account before, but that's what I did. Anyways, then we have to upload our Java file. We haven't done that yet. We just have calculated the price and everything, but we haven't uploaded the actual file. After we upload the file, we have to wait until they confirm and check that everything is correct. So they send you an email and that's when you have to pay. Then you pay and the board is ready for production. While you're waiting, you can check the status of your board online. After a couple of days, I got the package. And here they are. They really look beautiful and shiny. But actually, let's take a closer look. To be honest, it looks really good. But let's solder all the components in place and see how it goes. So that way we will see if it's good or not. So let's gather all the components I will need. These are SMD components or surface mounted device which are very, very small. So it's gonna be a pain to solder them in place, but it is actually possible. Even using simple tools as the ones that I'm using, 
And also something you gotta know before leaving bad comments about my soldering techniques is that I'm really a noob, I'm just a hobbyist on the electronics, so I'm not a professional and don't expect me to be. I'm just doing these things for fun and using them on my RC airplanes and stuff like that, because I just like it. That also proves a point, which is anyone who wants to make a PCB, engineer or a noob, or whatever level of knowledge on electronics you have, you can do it with PCB way. With that out of the way, let's continue with this project. So here you can see me doing this tedious process of soldering SMD components, but it is actually possible, even using these very cheap tools. So probably you as a viewer don't know much about soldering techniques. Well, me neither. I just saw some tutorials and and this is what I do normally when I solder SMD components. There are tons of video tutorials on how to solder and soldering techniques. So just watch one of them and then you have to practice and practice with several components and stuff to make your perfection. As you can see in this board, I didn't want it to be printed with a lot of numbers and letters and the name of the components because it will get very crowded, especially in the size of this board. So I just left some markings for like the diode and the 555 orientation and that way I know what orientation it should have. But the rest is really simple, like the capacitors, they don't need orientation. And because there are not many critical components, there is no need to. Some of these components are very easy to solder and some of them are very tricky, like the potentiometers. They don't have legs, they have pads, which are located directly underneath them, so it's very hard to get the solder in there. So that's why I'm using a flux pen or any kind of flux will work for this, because it transfers the heat very well and that way you can melt it in. So we are almost done, we just need to place the pin headers for the input and outputs and we are done. You can also connect wires directly if you prefer so. Then we connect the battery for the first time in the input and we start moving the potentiometers around just little by little until we get a signal. And there. Sometimes it will take a long time to get a signal because these potentiometers are very sensitive, so you have to be very patient, or maybe use different values for potentiometers. Now you might be asking yourself, what is this circuit useful for? Well, there are many applications that you can use this circuit for, like the one that I mentioned before in my RC airplanes, putting the LED lights on the tips of the wings, making it look like a real airplane with strobe lights. It could also be useful for any RC model, like RC cars or any RC aircraft that needs a flashing or a strobe light, or even real-world applications using some external components like a relay, which will drive higher loads like this light bulb. But now I'm going to use my ship oscilloscope to take a look at the output signals of the circuit. Everything is working fine, but I still have that noise that I wanted to fix from the first version. And that's how I realized that I didn't fix the noise problem from the first version. 
and that's what I wanted to fix, placing some capacitors. But unfortunately, I'm a noob and I didn't put the capacitors where they are supposed to. And they are supposed to be on the output. As you can see, if we place a 1 microfarad capacitor, it gets rid of a lot of noise. Now all of this is not a big deal because all of this noise is generated by the electromagnetism inside the house by the electric grid. And the circuit is still working fine, but it's just something I want to overcome. I just want the output signal to be very clean. I'm going to solve this problem in the version number 3. And also, if you are an expert on these kind of things, please leave a comment telling the community what's the best way to get rid of this noise. Now I'm going to finish off my project with some wires going to an LED so I can put the LED whatever I want and then using some plastic heat shrink to cover the circuit so it looks more professional. So there you have it, we had the bare PCB, then we mounted the components, and now we have a final product with all the components and everything we need. So it's just ready to work. We plug the battery and we have a blinking LED, and we can adjust the blinking time and everything. So really cool. I'll leave a link in the description with the schematic of this project so you can make your own. And also there is links in the description for the PCB Way company so you can order your PCBs and stuff like that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.